Our first academy is called How Do They Milk Oats? A Deep Dive into Plant-Based Milk Market Intelligence, hosted by Sam Cookney, Solutions Team Lead at TalkWalker. To support our playbooks, Sam is gonna help us tackle key questions, including how can you discover new ideas for growth and how can you pinpoint emerging trends or identify the changing ways in which your consumers engage with your product? Please join me, everyone, in welcoming Sam to the virtual stage. Hi, thanks, Erica. And, uh, awesome. Thanks. How are you doing today? I'm excited to get started. Good. We're, we're here in uh, freezing cold London. So, uh, yeah. I know. I know. I wish I was there, but I'm, I'm glad we definitely have our studio and our team there and look forward to next year. Yeah. Um, I am going to be back for Q&A soon, but for now, I'll, I'll let you take the stage. Thank you so much. Super. Thank you, Erica. And uh, hello again. Good afternoon. Uh, good morning to everyone in the US. Thank you for, for joining us today. I really appreciate you being here. So as Erica mentioned, we're going to do a bit of a deep dive this afternoon into uh, TalkWalker's new product, which we're calling Market Intelligence. Uh, the idea being, we really want to kind of start diving into industry-level intelligence um, to understand conversations outside of your brand uh, that may be having an impact on your brand and products. The example we're going to look at, uh, as Erica mentioned, is that of plant-based milk. So we'll be taking a deep dive into the beverage category, uh, understanding some of those key trends, and how you can use social and online data to really speed up uh, your access to insights. Before we dive in, let's have just a very quick look at what it is we're kind of pulling in here to the, uh, the market intelligence platform. Uh, really what we're doing is, is five things. So firstly, we are listening to billions of online conversations uh, in real time, pulling in a whole host of social media data sources. We're categorizing that data using industry standard taxonomies, whether that's from IAB, the WHO, for example. Uh, and for anyone who's familiar with social listening and has kind of done this before, I think one of the immediate benefits you'll see is that this is syndicated data. So uh, you're not having to go in and actually kind of build these in-depth Boolean queries yourselves around different products, categories, and themes. Uh, you're not having to do that QA. Uh, we're kind of doing all that work for you. We're categorizing, we're writing the queries, we're then enriching this data using our AI models, which means you can then just go straight in. So without having to kind of build those queries, you can go straight into the platform, look at the sort of questions that you're looking to answer around your industry, and then crucially use that data to actually make decisions within your organization. So as well as kind of sitting with uh, social media teams, marketing teams, comm teams, we're also seeing lots of consumer insights teams um, within brands start to use market intelligence, industry insights, answering questions like, what are the key trends impacting my brand, uh, also my industry as a whole? We're seeing strategy teams uh, understand any missed opportunities that uh, may be there on the table, maybe some new partnerships that you can align with. And we're also seeing innovation teams start to hunt out uh, opportunities for new products uh, and also understand you know, how customers are actually feeling about your products directly. So with that in mind, I'm going to jump straight over to the platform here. And what we're going to look at today, as I mentioned, is really the, the beverage category. So we'll look at kind of beverages as a whole. Uh, now, what that means is we're actually looking at the entire beverage industry online. So everything from teas to coffees to plant-based milks, juices, smoothies, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of data here. Uh, as you can probably understand, a lot of different breakdowns where you can look at this data. But I just find it's kind of interesting to come with a specific question or a use case um, to platforms like this. And so the example that we're going to look at today, as Erica mentioned, uh, is based around plant-based milk. So I'm going to take the sort of suggestion that let's say I work for a large CPG brand and we've heard that uh, plant-based milk is trending at the moment. It's something that's kind of really popular. Consumers are really discussing it much more online and we'd like to launch our own plant-based milk. Uh, but before we go into the category, we need to understand a bit more about what's currently being said around this topic. Uh, maybe what are some of the, the top uh, products than plant-based milk? Are there uh, maybe some opportunities that have already passed? Maybe we're kind of behind the curve already. So I'm looking at this from a product perspective of uh, how can I start to decide what sort of product area we should move into? But let's also say that I'm going to be working with my uh, communications and marketing team, and, and they're really looking at how we can then position this product uh, and also who we can target for the product as well. So with that in mind, we're going to look at the 
beverage category here. Uh, we're going over five years worth of data. And actually what I've done is actually just look at the, the past two years worth of data here. And what that means is I can then use that two years worth of data to do an accurate comparison to the previous two year period. So what we can see here, for example, is that the, the beverage category globally has actually gone up by nearly a quarter in this two year period. And a similar number of unique authors uh, have also increased as well. But whilst the global view is, is useful, I think you know, we always want to look at our own individual market. So let's just have a quick look at the UK here. And see how the picture varies when we come to our particular market. And I think interesting to see here that actually within the UK, beverage conversations are actually down 14% over the past uh, two year period. And if we look at some of those key hashtags over this period, I find it quite amusing to see that within the UK, the hashtags fitness and health both dropped by just over 70% within lockdown. Uh, and that was certainly my key takeaway from lockdown there as well. But let's move out of the general beverage category and kind of deep dive into the plant-based milks, which is really where we want to focus our attention today. So as I said, we kind of heard this idea that plant-based has been growing over the past couple of years. Uh, that's borne out here in this data. We can see that the plant-based category is up 37% in this two-year period. And also the number of unique authors posting about it is up by a third as well. When we now look at those kind of key hashtags around this area to get a, just a quick sense of what's been going on, what that main conversation is, we can see that overall dairy conversations are actually down 70%. Some of those new emerging conversations, however, include oat milk and almonds, both up by around 20%. But the one that really caught my attention was uh, hashtag ad at the very top here, up by over 100%. And what this suggests to me is that the, the plant-based milk industry is now actually starting to partner with influencers, which really shows just kind of how mainstream this is becoming. And we can actually see some of those influencer posts here behind that hashtag. So uh, here in the UK, for example, we can see an influencer doing a partnership with the co-op supermarket and the MoMA oat milk brand. And over in the US, we can also see there's individual outlets like Dunkin' Donuts, who've also been doing partnerships uh, with influencers around their own oak milk lattes. But let's take a bit of a deep dive into that plant-based category now to understand, are there specific products that are trending right now? And where should we really are focusing our attention within this category as a whole? So when we look at the online share of voice, so the number of people who've been talking about these products over the past couple of years, I think the first thing that sticks out is that Almond milk is by far the dominant category here at 37% share of voice. But the thing that really caught my attention actually on this chart isn't so much the share of voice, it's this trending figure. And almond milk is actually only up 6% in that period, whereas oat milk is actually up by nearly 300%. So this is something that's kind of really growing right now and is really obviously starting to trend. In fact, when we look at these conversations over time, oat milk being this purple one here, we can see that actually in 2021, it's the first year where oat milk has actually started to overtake almond milk in terms of overall conversations. And obviously quantitative numbers are kind of great to start with, but I think it's always good to kind of add that qualitative aspect as well. Uh, and that's really what net sentiment here is doing. So we're looking at the overall tone of these conversations, whether they're positive or negative to each one of these products. And what we can see is that almond milk is consistently lower in overall positivity than oat milk to the point where there's actually been some negative net sentiment around almond milk. And again, we can dive into this and just understand some of those specific conversations. So this top post here coming from Reddit suggests a lot of people are kind of going off almond milk due to its environmental and sustainability problems. Uh, that's a post that generated three and a half thousand comments, so pretty big there on Reddit. But we can also, you know, rather than having to go through each one of those posts and really doing manual deep dives on the conversations, we can use the sentiment key drivers chart here, which just gives you a really quick overview of some of those top positive conversations here on the right. So people saying, you know, they really love oat milk, highly recommend, for example, good almonds, love almonds. 
towards some of those more negative conversations here on the left. And this is where you'll then see, for example, uh, causing environmental damage being one of those key negative drivers when it comes to almond milk. But let's say as you start to kind of develop your product that actually you've already identified a competitor who you think is doing this really well. I'm sure everyone has seen the adverts on the sides of buses and bus stops for Oatly. They do seem to be everywhere in London at the moment. You can just also query the data directly. So if I do a quick search here for Oatly, we can ask you all those conversations around the Oatly brand and understand really what consumers are saying about this brand. What do they like? What don't they like? And where can we draw inspiration from that? The second spike here was back in February and will probably be familiar to any of our uh, American viewers today. This was Oatly doing an ad at the Super Bowl back in February that generated quite a lot of online conversation. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of this conversation was negative. Um, so we see posts like the Oatly ad being as bad as oat milk. Uh, I'm now against oat milk just because of how bad that ad was and so on and so forth. I think, you know, as marketers, it's often very easy to kind of get drawn into these viral tweets, especially when they are, you know, quite popular and also quite negative. But I think that's really where the sentiment key drivers chart just helps us to get some perspective on this whole issue. So rather than kind of focusing just on, on one or two key tweets, uh, we can actually use that sentiment key drivers chart to understand those overall conversations. And what we see is that actually, you know, when we look at Oatly as a brand as a whole, the vast majority of those conversations here from consumers are actually hugely positive. Um, people are highly recommending the brand. It's a great vegan alternative, for example. And in fact, the only negative conversations we see here on the left uh, are actually around uh, uh, trademark infringement. So nothing to do with the product itself, really, just more about the actual brand. So let's now have a quick look at our trends matrix which is really super useful just to understand how trends have been happening historically and how conversations have grown or shrunk in each of these individual categories. Now, what we're looking at here is on the x-axis, overall volume of conversations for each of these products. And then on the y-axis, what we call trend. So how much these conversations have actually been changing and growing over time. And I'm gonna start this little animation here, which is going back five years, so back to 2016. Um, what I recommend is just keep your eye on this little purple oat milk circle here and just see how this conversation has actually grown over the past five years. And what you'll see is towards the end, that for the first time, those conversations around oat milk in 2021 have now started to actually grow faster than almond milk. There's not been kind of much change on these smaller milks here. They've not really sort of grown or shrunk much over the past five years. So nothing's really trending here. But the way that brands start to use the trends matrix here is start to understand some of those areas of opportunity. So in the top right here, for example, any products you might see over here uh, would be these established conversations that are also growing really fast right now that you might want to be on top of. Anything down here in the bottom left, however, these are gonna be smaller conversations that are already on the decrease. So it could be areas where maybe you've actually already missed the trend. Uh, it helps you, you know, not jump into an area uh, that's already starting to decrease in popularity. But let's take a bit of a deep dive now into some more of those characteristics around these individual products. And that's where we use what we call the custom filters here, which is different ways of segmenting down these conversations that consumers are having. Whether it's around things like flavors, uh, time of day people are drinking other drinks, different coffee bean types. Because what I really want to understand as this product marketer is what are some of the contexts in which people are consuming these plant-based milks? Again, just to give me a bit more idea around um, where can we start to meet consumers where they're drinking these beverages? So first thing we could do is just, given the very cold day here in London today, have a look at seasons. I don't understand, is there maybe some sort of seasonal trend where people are consuming plant-based milk? Plant-based milk is that little pink box here, where we can see there's just a slight increase here in autumn for people consuming plant-based milks. Perhaps as people switch to pumpkin spice lattes, that kind of makes sense. We can look at some of the specific occasions where people are consuming these products. Uh, given I'm at work now, I think this one stuck out to me the most. I think interesting to see people consuming coffee most at work. 
but also this category here of energy-based drinks. And kind of what emerges from this is this idea, and this is sort of bang on time for three o'clock here in the UK, you kind of have that afternoon slump. Um, people are using energy drinks to really kind of get them through the day, uh, along with coffee, which kind of gets me thinking around plant-based milks, and is there some kind of tie in there? So finally, I could then look specifically at the time of day where people are actually consuming these products. Again, is there a particular time of day, evening, daytime, where people might be drinking plant-based milk? Uh, and similarly to the, the coffee and pick-me-up example, actually, we're seeing a slight skew here towards tea time and late afternoon. So we could then dive deep, deep dive sorry, within the uh, category and actually understand if there's maybe one milk in particular that people are drinking more than any uh, in the late afternoon. And again, we see that actually almond milk comes out top here. So I'm starting to kind of deep dive into this category, get a bit more information around it. And again, without having to sort of go through all that content and read all those posts, just to really understand what consumers are saying, what I can actually do is then look at our, our themes wheel to understand some of those main conversations. This will give me a quick overview of what it is people are saying specifically around tea time and late afternoon. Um, we see this idea of snack coming up quite a bit. Um, we can see people are discussing protein around snacks. So this sort of idea kind of again emerges here of people looking for a, a pick-me-up in the afternoon uh, and perhaps also looking for something on the, the healthy side of things. So maybe moving away from the energy drinks and looking more towards plant-based milk. What we'll do now is just have a quick look at what we call our conversation clusters. And I think it's always useful, you know, when you're looking at kind of five years worth of data, two years worth of data, just to also to get something up to the minutes and kind of really understand what's happening in the industry right now. And that's what the conversation clusters do. They're looking just at the past 30 days worth of data. They're looking at that category as a whole. And we're using our AI to automatically group some of those conversations. So I can first of all see just what are those main topics within the industry without having to define them myself. I can see where maybe there's some crossover in the category. So people are discussing quality time with maybe you know some nice herbal teas. They're discussing health and wellness, daily routines. How can I start to play into some of these areas? What I thought was super interesting for the, the last month on record here, so for October, actually the, the main discussion within the beverage industry was actually around dairy and plant-based milks. Uh, we can delve into this. We can kind of see some of the main brands that are being mentioned here. So uh, we see Chavani, Alpro, for example, as well as some of those partner brands like Dunkin', Starbucks. But what I found interesting here was even though dairy and plant-based milk takes up 10% of the overall conversation in the beverage space, it's actually generating really small amounts of engagement. So lots of conversation, but nothing that people are really engaging with. Uh, and as a brand, that kind of suggests to me there's a, a strong opportunity here for either a brand to start taking dominance in that space, or what could be super interesting is actually starting to work with some of the key influencers in the space. So we can see here some of those top influencers. In this case, it's mostly Reddit, which I find really interesting. Uh, so dairy-free forums on Reddit. We're seeing Ask Vegan forums, for example. Uh, so these are some areas where we could then start to think from a marketing and commerce perspective, are there some key influencers in this space? Are there some key sites, key forums, uh, where we could then start to engage with these influencers as we start to launch this product? So as you've seen by now, we've kind of gone sort of a fairly, fairly lengthy different area around this topic, looking at different products, maybe different areas, different sentiments around those products. And we're starting to, I think, focus a little bit maybe on this kind of healthy living, fitness, protein, pick-me-up sort of uh, interest category here. And that, I think, is where we can then start to look at who our audience actually is. So who's posting about these products? Who are we targeting here? Again, I always think it's kind of super useful to start with the category as a whole. So if we look at beverages in general, uh, we can see that they're made up at the moment of 56% women. How does that compare to plant-based conversations specifically? And we see there's you know, a slight skew here. So it's now 61% female for plant-based milk. Also a super young audience. So the vast majority here being under the age of 34. But if we then look at the, the top interests of this audience, and we kind of look at those people who are most interested in fitness and health, if we take that, that fitness protein angle, 
what jumps out here in those purple colors are actually two different milks that we hadn't even considered before. So macadamia nut milk here and pea protein milk are actually those two most popular within the fitness and health audience. So these hadn't come up before in the overall volumes of conversations, but they're two that this particular audience are super interested in. Um, let's say we then decide to sort of go with the pea protein milk. We can then kind of query this and actually see some of the top conversations for consumers discussing their favorite brands. So this is something I'd never heard of, but again, somewhere that I might want to start my next uh, level of investigation, maybe seeing how people are talking about the Sprout brand here, what they like about it and don't like about it. So I'm going to wrap it up there for today. Uh, as you've seen, there's kind of a, a huge amount of data here. And really, we've just taken one path within this particular product. So we've kind of taken this idea of launching a plant-based milk. We've gone from almond milk to oat milk. And in the end, I think if I was about to launch one of these products, I'd probably go with one of these two here, just based on the specific audience that I was looking to test. But you know, you can come to this, you can ask your own questions, test your own hypotheses, and hopefully come to your own conclusions. And so with that, I'm going to hand back over to Erica, and I believe we will be doing a, a quick Q&A. Thank you so much. Great job. Um, really fantastic insights. And we do have a couple of questions. So let's let's dig in and take some of those now, and then we'll wrap on your key takeaways. So first of all, let's let's take a step back. What what type of data really sits behind all of this? Can you can you break that down a little bit more for our audience? And I guess kind of as a two-parter, what how can they not get overwhelmed? What are some best practices that they're they're trying to apply this type of, you know, these types of insights and tools? How can they avoid being overwhelmed? Absolutely. Yeah, great question. Um, so as I said, there's kind of billions of conversations sitting behind this, which can be overwhelming. Uh, in terms of the data we're looking at, so a lot of social platforms, so Twitter, forums, blogs, um, all that good stuff, lots of online news sources as well, um, but specifically consumer conversations. That's what we're looking at here. It's not so much uh, B2B conversations. It's what we call uh, C2B conversations, so consumers talking about brands, for example. Uh, so that's really where all the data is coming from. Uh, we're then categorizing it, as I said, so we're kind of building those queries in the back end. So you don't need to go and actually build those queries yourself. It's kind of all done. So it's a simple uh, click and drop, as you saw there. How do you not get overwhelmed, I think, is a, a very good question. There's a lot of data there, a lot of different breakdowns, a lot of different ways to view that data. And I think, you know, I always say to brands as a best practice, um, it's really great to come to these tools, these platforms with, with a question in mind. Um, rather than just kind of going and clicking around and sort of getting lost down a rabbit hole, it's more, what am I looking to achieve today? Do I want to find out consumers' attitudes towards uh, glass bottles? That was a great example we saw last week. So that was a beverage company trying to understand, should they launch uh, plastic bottles, glass bottles, or should they be looking at uh, paper, cardboard, for example? So then coming here to the platform and then seeing um, what all those conversations consumers are having uh, in different beverage categories around those different products. And it kind of steers them in a direction of here's what people like about glass. Uh, it turned out there's huge communities of people who will only drink Coca-Cola from glass because it tastes better. I had no idea. Uh, while some people, you know, vehemently are very much against plastic. So I think it helps you, you know, sort of come there. So I'd always say, you know, come with a come with a question, come curious uh, and kind of let the data start guiding you in different directions. Yeah, no, that's super helpful. And I, I loved what you said about coming into it, having a, a particular question or, or goal in mind. I think kind of no matter what we're talking about as marketers, that it always kind of seems to come back to that. And I think that's, it's really super important. Um, another question before we take a couple that we got from our audience um, beyond beverage, what what other industries is this actually available and, and useful for, um, or, or even types of companies? I know, for um, example, Victoria in the audience said, you know, can we use this type of software, um, the market intelligence on software products, and you know, where does this come into play if you're in the B two B marketing space? It's a great question, and I probably should have uh, led with that. So thanks for asking. So at the moment, we, we have six fully built out uh, categories. So beverages obviously being one. Uh, we also have food trends, uh, sports, entertainment, health and wellness, and consumer goods. Um, so those are all live at the moment. They're all very comprehensively built. Uh, we are currently working on a number of other categories. 
Um, and these are all basically client and industry led. So um, I, I know off the top of my head, for example, fashion, beauty, finance, alcohol, these are all kind of the, the biggest things we're hearing demand for right now. Um, I think software is a great example. And I think obviously, as Talk Walker, we could probably use that one as well. So we'll see if we can pass that one to the, uh, the product team as a, a key priority. I think that's a really great example of one that could be really interesting to look at. Perfect. Um, that's super helpful. Thank you so much. Another question that came in is from Sveta. So thank you very much. She asks, um, how would you suggest or what metrics do you use to decide if something is strong enough of a trend to focus on, especially as we think about the B2B space? How do you find subgroups of trends? How do you identify those? And you know, what, what data would you particularly look like if you're starting to get, um, if you're starting to get niche there? Yeah, I think it's a really great question. So firstly, our, our sort of categories, our subcategories um, are all defined kind of using industry standards. So as I mentioned, depending on the category, we might use, say, the IAB's definitions, we might use WHO's definitions. I think that's what we did for beverages, for example. So the starting point is we kind of take existing be best practice. Let's kind of not reinvent the wheel around individual industries where those exist. Um, but I think the key thing is that, you know, without those subcategories as well, we are monitoring the entire category. So even without specifically going Going into, you know, let's say you weren't really interested in almond milk or oat milk. Um, by looking at the category as a whole, you can start to see some of those other conversations that might be outside of those organically bubble up, which is where you start to see things like the trending hashtags. You see other topics that kind of start to come. So um, I think back to the example I just gave, you know, pea protein milk was something I would never would have looked at. But kind of looking at those demographic breakdowns, it's something that is now kind of immediately on my radar. So um, as well as I think using the guides and the prompts that we have there, you can again just you know yourself either query it with any keyword you want to put in and see what's being talked about or just let those organic conversations kind of bubble up through trends and actually see is there something we may have missed for example outside of those categories yeah i think that's another great point really kind of letting yourself take that opportunity to to listen um and and really take those insights um and pay attention um very fully i think that's a great point um, I wish we had more time for questions, but um, we do have a minute or so left to um, take a peek at your key takeaways. So let's shift gears to that. We're, we're pulling them up right now. And um, yeah, you can just take a second to speak to each. Awesome, Sean. I think the, you know, the, the main kind of reason why we launched Market Intelligence was we just kept hearing from brand uh, consumer insight teams that their traditional market research was just a bit too slow. By the time they'd kind of run surveys, they'd gone out and done focus groups, oftentimes the moment had actually passed, you know, it was slow, it was incomplete. So I think, you know, using the conversations that are already out there about your brand, about your industry, um, using AI on top of that just really helps you actually increase that speed to insights and go to market quicker. Um, I think that's the second point really, which is that COVID has definitely started to advance this, but it was happening already. You know, there's never been a, a time where consumer behavior and industry shifts are happening this fast. Trends come, they go as quickly, you know, as anything really. So I think being on top of those is just essential. Any brands that really aren't tracking these industry trends will simply get left behind. And I think as we saw just now, often those ideas and innovation can come from totally unexpected places. I mean, I'd never even heard of pea protein milk, to be quite honest, until uh, last week when I started playing with this. So, you know, having those kind of huge data sets available, so you can kind of listen to everything, having those breakdowns there, really just make sure that you don't miss any opportunities. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Um, sadly, that's all the time we have, Sam, but great job once again. And thank you again, and a final shout out to our partner, TalkWalker, for their collaboration in this session. Um, Sam, thanks so much, and hopefully we'll be in touch soon and have you on our stage, hopefully in person. <laughs> Pleasure. Very thanks.